Because the Old Testament, if you look at the history of how God interacted with human beings, especially the Jewish people in their history, where God says, you know, I am God and there's none else, and you should have no other God besides me. You should worship none but me. So God was quite explicit in terms of saying, without any ambiguity, do you agree that you should not worship anyone other than me? If you're now saying it's okay to worship a rat as well, that goes against what God has already mentioned. What do you mean by worship? You, you didn't say worship. Appreciation of, of creation. So. I say worship. For example, when you give all your reverence and thanks and glory and gratitude um, that is only deserving of God, and you do that in the way that He's the only one who deserves your utmost gratitude, your utmost you know, love, that is what we say worship. Now, would you give that to a rat? A worship to a rat? In the way I described when you worship God. I don't think so. Appreciations are the creation. So we appreciate I, I God's appreciate creation. You, my friend. That's I not worship. The, uh, that's not worship. That's not worship. So if somebody really worships a rat or another human being, a Palestinian human being or an Indian human being called Krishna, if they worship someone with all their heart and their mind and their soul, not just appreciation, would God approve of that worship? God says no. Then he wouldn't. If then he wouldn't. If you believe in those words. Yeah, God actually mentioned this to all his prophets and messengers as time has gone by. Two thousand year old text is a lot of it. Uh, factually, how factually true it actually is. You're, you're saying God said that, but mostly you're having human beings who wrote that hundreds of years after mm. the, it actually took place. So to, uh, to you're worshiping the word, it sounds to me, mm. which is just as bad in my opinion. But that's when you have not confidence in the preservation history of the text that was initially given from guidance from God. Like if the Bible has undergone corruption in the forms of additions and omissions and alterations throughout history, then you can say that. But when you compare the Quran, which we say is the final revelation from God, the preservation history of the Quran is amazing. And this is why we can have the confidence that what we read or recite or memorize today is what was left by the Prophet. Even if that's true, and I don't know, I've never read the Quran, I would like to read the Quran. Uh, words are not the truth. Words can maybe point to the truth. But words can never be the truth. Words, yeah, are, words are pointing words, to the truth, right? Words are yeah, words, words are pointing to the, the truth. reality, words can never, you have to experience it. That's why you, prayer, I imagine that you prayer is fundamental to Christianity also. Meditation is Buddhism. Mm. Only by experience can you reach that high reality. Words themselves, as, I mean, my friend there, because he goes to my church, mm. you guys fight over the words. Do you think do you think it's possible the reason why they don't give the words the authority because they know the words are corrupted but if you rely on your personal experience okay what about the limitations of human experience well that's true we are limited yeah exactly so so if people try to use their experience to connect to god people can have different understanding of who God is. If you think about the understanding in Zainism, exactly, in Buddhism and so on, yeah. And that's why there needs to be some kind of arbitration where we say, this is where you can settle the dispute and we say the only thing that can convince us with all certainty is when God sends divine revelation with proofs and evidence through his prophets and messengers. Well, God, God incarnate in humans. You say Jesus, you what, say... What, what does it even mean, incarnate? Well, it, for us, God is incarnate in Jesus, but in my interpretation, God is incarnate in every single one of us. What does it mean, he's incarnated? The Holy Spirit, God himself in creation. So the word incarnate, what does it mean? Uh, the best way I can put it in language, which is limited, is that we are the body of God. Okay, but you're the creation of God, so are you trying to say the creator... No, I didn't say I'm the creation of God, I said the body of God. Yeah. God is within me. But within this you. body, God created. Yeah. The creator, are you somehow suggesting the creator becomes the created through incarnation? The, the creator is within us and we wouldn't yeah. even be alive. I want to understand, does the creator become the created in any form or shape, or he always remains the creator, distinct from creation, which is the Islamic belief. Well, you talk about the Holy Trinity, three and one, or one and three. God is within. 
Think about it. The Creator is Almighty, the Most High, the All Knowledgeable, the Absolute. To incarnate into a human body, which is. Where's your friend? Sorry, my wife. Oh, your wife. Yes? Okay. You should probably speak to, to Bob over there. Um, I have spoken to him before. Oh, probably many times okay? I, I have spoken to him before. <laughs> so, what I'm suggesting is this the Creator, being absolute, sovereign, being the Almighty, all knowledgeable, we need to affirm his attributes and not contradict them at the same time. And let me give you an example. Sure let me, let me give you an example. If we affirm that God is all loving, for example, the Christians affirm, right? We say God is all loving, Al-Wadud. Then we cannot say he's not all loving at the same time. It will be a contradiction. If we affirm God is all knowledgeable, we have to affirm the opposite, that he's not all knowledgeable. If we affirm God is absolute, the opposite is being not absolute. We have to affirm that because they're contradiction in terms. So when in a Christian belief system, God incarnates in a human body, one body or many bodies in your understanding, what is happening? The infinite becomes finite. The all knowledgeable becomes ignorant. The all powerful becomes weak. That doesn't make much coherent sense, does it? Well, everything you said, the premise there, how true it is that God is all knowledgeable for absolutely everything. I'm not sure. Can he be other than perfect? Well, can a being who is necessarily to exist, because there are three different types of existence. Yeah, there's a possible existence, impossible existence, and a necessary existence. You and I, we have possible existence. We could not have existed. God could have not created us, for example. We're not necessary to exist. But God's existence is necessary. Even the fact that we are here you need to have an explanation for our existence and this can only make sense once there is a necessary existence. So God's existence is necessary. Such an existence, let's conclude then, such an existence of a necessary being has to be an existence of perfection, not in any way imperfect. I don't, I don't know if you can uh, say that for definite. You, you, Why not? You seem very absolute, very definite, yeah, yeah. very sure. How can you, how can you, you believe in an existence? How can you believe in a necessary being who is imperfect? God might be all powerful and us being sent down here as the body is for us to grow and to learn and develop. And then once we once we do that, okay. we take that back to the source. The let's, power of God. Let's give one example. Let's give let's give one example. More examples than in the books. Let's give one example. Can anyone be more powerful than God? Maybe there's there's other gods. Who knows? Maybe our God. If there, are, power and you your book if, and there, if there are multiple gods, what's going to happen to the universe? How do you know? Do you know how small you are right now, my friend? Yeah. Do you know? You do, you know do you know? Do you know what we mean by? You know? Do you know what we mean by gods? If there are gods which are absolute and powerful enough, they will fight with each other and they will destroy themselves and they will take and destroy the whole universe. Imagine one of the gods says, "Ah, oh, I don't like this gentleman." I want him to just disappear. But another God says, but I like this gentleman. He's so kind, so passionate. And, 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 and what happens is, he says, I want this gentleman to keep on having that conversation, despite his wife asking him, right? For example, what's going to happen to you? Two contradictory things not going to happen to you. So we know that polytheism or the belief in multiple gods doesn't make sense. It's irrational. The world will be in chaos and ruin if there were multiple gods. I would tend, there, to, I would tend to agree with you, but I wouldn't yeah. be absolutely say that's a Think about Just it. If, like no, no, but think about it. If there were multiple gods, there would always be a conflict of will. Have you ever thought about, like, imagine? Have you ever seen, not imagine, in any country where there's more than one king, in the same country, more than one prime minister, more than one queen, it will be chaos. If you are driving in a car, and your wife is driving with her independent steering wheel and control. Even if you left Christianity behind, the Quran. Yeah. Now, who, who's all creators? Sure, sure. Is that right? Now, I want to. I want to. There is chaos. I want to drive home. I want to drive home this con concept of conflict of so will. You're, you're being who's invented okay. you. Okay. He, he, there's chaos all sure. over the and there has been you have, in the Muslim world for a very long time. You have free will. So does your wife, right? Exactly. So she's sitting on the left, and you sit on the right on the same car with two different steering wheel and controls. Your wife decides, I'm going to take the car to the north, and he said, I'm going to take the car to the south. Where's the car going to go? Both of you, 
You're not listening to each other. You're in control. Both of you are in control. Yeah, I did give you free will and then me also. No, if both of you are in control in this car, which has two different set of controls to navigate, where is the car going to go when there's opposite intention of taking the car? You have to come to an agreement. Yeah? So that means none of them are absolute. <laughs> an absolute being does not compromise. Nothing's absolute. No, no, that's what I'm saying. God, God will be sovereign. God bless. Sovereign. God we take bless. care. I know she's waiting. God bless. Right? She's still right? Watch out the microphone. Where's she going? <laughs> Here we are. I would. I would. Uh, I yeah. think we should give him the Quran. There you go. It's here. Got it. Thank you. So as Muslims, Quran tells us how to really critically analyze all these different belief systems to arrive at the truth. Yeah? The truth is important. Absolutely. Said. God bless. You take care.